What's going on, music producers? Music producers! Video producers, live producers, re- recording producers, all these producers. <laughs> Which we'll talk about today, live recording producers in the studio. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully y'all are doing good out there in the universe of the world and internet. That's right. The universe of internet. <laughs> exactly. We are going to talk about mastering the art of live band recording in the studio. Mm-hmm. Me and Ray Dog are going to go at it. I'm Rome. This is Ray. What's up? What's up? We've been doing music production for a long time, and we're going to help you guys do it, too, and be successful at mm-hmm. it and make a lot of money doing it. That's right. And potentially quit your nine to five so Come you on. can just do what you love. Wouldn't that be nice? Only takes a few tracks. I'm giving myself the horn for that because that's, right. that's what we're talking about. Before we jump into anything, we want to let you all know about Industry Standard Productions. That's right. Forwardproducer.com slash ISP. ISP. If you're watching, it's on the the video right there. If you're not, we just said what the URL is. Forwardproducer.com slash ISP. Industry Standard Productions, seven ways to level up your music production. Mm -hmm. We talk about songwriting, which is extreme important. Talk about recording, mastering, all the stuff that goes into play there, and hopefully it will help you a lot to yes. level up. Level up. Music production. Because it's been helping a lot of people so far. Yep. People are getting a lot out of it, and guess what? It's free. It's free. Don't get left behind. Other That's people right. got it already, and they're going to uh-huh. level up, and you don't want your stuff to be left in the dust because you're still stuck in your old way of producing. Correct. So level it up. Before we jump into the main talk, we have overrated... Or underrated, <laughs> and that is going to be paying for playlisting. Paying for playlisting. Is it overrated or is it underrated, Ray? Go ahead. Tell us what you Well, think. I would say I would go on the overrated side, It be, be, and here's why, because it's, quite frankly, it's a crapshoot. I mean, What does that mean, a crapshoot? Like, you, you can't know for sure that when you pay for playlisting, you will actually get on good playlists. I mean, I know that's what they advertise and all that. They guarantee streams. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, on just can't, you, you can't. I mean, that that's almost impossible. So that that's why I think it's, I, I'd put an overrated on that side. Now listen, if you could guarantee it and it was on a decent amount, what, well, number one, a decent amount of playlists, and then th- those playlists were actually... You know, over a thousand. <laughs> yeah, you know, some really good playlists, and you could truly count on it and monetize it. You know, the, then it would be underrated if you could actually do that. But if it's actual people streaming it, not robots. Exactly, exactly. So that's that's why it's definitely overrated, and I wouldn't spend money on it. Like I try to spend money, and 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 know for sure what my ROI is going to be. So if I put in X. I know I'm going to get back X. Which is going to be nothing because streaming ain't making much money. Right, but still. But if you got merging stuff and you have other stuff that exactly. you lead people down a little fan pathway. Exactly. A funnel. A little funnel action. That's right. And so I mean, th- that's where I like to spend my money on, on things I can guarantee, guarantee certain a little, results. A little cheddar that's on right. the back end. That's why live music is still good. So, okay, so if I spend money getting the band there if i'm getting you know spending the money on my sound guy all that okay well then i can count on a thousand bucks coming back right you know i'd rather spend money doing a live show right message (laughs) right exactly (laughs) just be careful where you put your money you know since we're all investing in this you know Make sure you, there isn't you're putting money where there's an actual ROI. Yeah, I think it's That's, overrated too. Yep, I'll say overrated because most of these playlists is like the guarantee one. Right, we'll get you on X amount of playlists and we guarantee ten thousand streams. Really? Yeah, it's like what? Stop it! I've, I've experienced these playlists before <laughs> with other artists I work with. Yeah, and they get followers on Spotify, they get the streams, but then once you stop paying to be on the playlist it goes away it goes away but sometimes these robots are the people that you're paying because it's it's super what's it called it's like secretive right like you're not talking how we're talking now with the person it's all like pay Through here chat. on paypal submit your form submit your artist stuff and we'll we'll set it up in 
fulfill. Right. And then I've seen that the artist is still on the playlist, but they're not getting streams or followers. How's that possible? Because they're robot streaming is what they're doing. Wow. It's all robot. It's all computer based. Yeah. So unless you could go through and vet the actual playlist, you're going to be, it's going to be a little predicament because not only are you getting like a waste of money and all that. Right. But if you have, if you're showing Spotify that you have all these followers, yeah, and then you release something and all those robots are not listening to your stuff, Spotify's going to think you're trash and they're not going to put your stuff out more. Ah, oh, right. And, on, and also on top of that, if you're getting robot streams and Spotify or Apple or Amazon or blah, 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 YouTube sees that, yeah, they're going to rip your music down or they're going to blacklist you. It's definitely not worth it. <laughs> so, Playlisting like that in that sense overrated. For Underrated sure. will be if you actually reach out to people that are right, actual people. They have a legit playlist, or you right, know, and they you work with someone that's done the playlist before, and they're like, yeah, you could pay to be on here, yeah. for a, whatever amount of time. No streams are guaranteed. Typically, that's the right way. Right, right. No right, streams, right. no followers are guaranteed. We'll just put you on this playlist that is working for other people. There you go. That's that's a little underrated, probably. There you go. Or yeah. properly rated. <laughs> But yeah, be careful. There's a lot of people trying to take be your money careful. out there, especially in the digital age, mm-hmm. especially whenever like Bitcoin's a thing too. If they ask you to pay in Bitcoin and you haven't talked to a person in face-to-face, it's like, okay. Dude, I haven't seen that. Man, you've seen some crazy stuff. Yeah, bro. We've been hustling, Ray Dog. We've been <laughs> hustling. Crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so just be wary of that. Playlists are good. Best thing to do is make your own playlist yes. and grow those up. Uh-huh. Put your sound, your music on there, and then other artists that are similar that are bigger. Cool. And promote that playlist. There you go. Better money invested, probably. Yeah. So we're going to jump into the main talk. We are talking about mastering the art of live band recording because it is an art. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of variables involved, especially yep. when we talk about being a music producer. It's like you could wear multiple hats, or you could wear none, or you could wear one, whatever right, it is. Right, exactly. So what would you, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go through like the beginning, pre pre-recording. Yeah middle of it and then the exit strategy so what would you do the beginning because we talked a little bit a bit before well on the pre the pre what i would do is two things number one i would try to get the best players possible Mm -hmm. and please take it you know from someone with some some experience that so this is like producing an artist where they need the band assembled not a band coming in that's correct like get the best players possible because I mean, it's little things. Whenever, whenever you're working with a band and producing a band, it's it's all the little things like uh, being in tune. You know, making sure that you, a quality instrument. your guitars and your basses, all that stuff is intonated so that you stay in tune. Then on the player side, make sure they're in the pocket. You know, and then the most important thing, make sure they know how to get great t- sounds and mm-hmm. tones. Right, so that's... That's all to me is number one, and that that is massive. The better you, get, the better player you get, the better your result will be on the back end, and probably the easier the recording process is going right. to be when you get there. Because here's the deal: I mean, some of these tuning things can sort of fix maybe a lead line or something. But what if you have delay on that lead line? Yeah, you know what I mean? So, so if <laughs> if if they're out of tune going to tape and you don't catch it, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It's going to stay out of tune. So, I mean, that that to me is is number one, is get the best player po- possible. Number two, this is all in the preparation phase, right? Yeah. Uh, number two is rehearse. Mm-hmm. I would, you know, especially if you have a band that you're doing, is rehearse that now. If you get Even st- more so if you're assembling a band that's never played together. Right. But if you're getting studio players, you wouldn't have to do it as much. Yeah, because they're professionals. Right, exactly. But... Uh, go, it would be great if you're doing a band record and you can do like a week of rehearsals. Mm-hmm. That that's what I would recommend. Like, what what do you have you? Yeah, yeah, you've done a lot of live recording. Yeah, right. So what what's your prep time look like? Uh, a lot of back and forth email and text of like <laughs> making sure you got this. Yeah, you you you're good with this. Yeah, yeah. How long are you able to do this? Or what about this? Right. So it's a lot of back and forth like a lot that. of commu- good communication. Good communication. Yeah, um, I'm able to intonate guitars, set them up, and stuff like that. You can, yeah, uh, bro. I didn't know that. Yeah, like guitar setup and stuff like that. How much you charge for you a million? <laughs> I'm able to do that. So, like, when someone comes into the studio, uh huh, 
they're like they're bringing a guitar that's maybe not quality right I'll be able to either help them set that up or I can play one of mine since I'm a guitar player I can play one of my five million guitars that are here that, that are proven that are intonated intonated <laughs> set up newer strings newish strings right, right 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 so they can hop on that just like what you're talking about so that could be that could be opportunity for people that are gonna get into music production that uh-huh. maybe they you know they want to add a little value for their clients of learning how to intonate learning how to tune right learning how to set up that is really cool yeah, because that's like alleviates a lot. Yeah, and then you know if you got your hands, if you know how to work the instrument, you got your hands. Say if there's two guitar players and a bass player. Yeah, and you're able to put your hands on and know that all three of these are gonna complement each other well. Yeah, it'll be, be better position for a, a good recording. Nice, that's cool. Yeah, so what you're saying is right on. I would say as well, knowing the music rehearsal, just like you said, is huge if you can. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's some softwares coming out about like you get the special interface and there's no delay or there's like super low delay on yeah. syncing up with someone in wherever. Right. That way you could do some rehearsals like that, but it's kind of hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you get them all in the room. Have you done, and I, I know it's kind of off, off subject, but have you done any remote recording? A lot. To where you're in... I told a story about I went to their practice space and botched the recording, remember? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but like if you're in your your studio... Someone else is in another city in their studio, and then at the same time, yeah, and you can no. rem- you remote record that way. No, we usually just send the stems over and let them track and send them back. And oh, it. yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, but that's that technology is that's like what I was talking about the uh, interface that yeah. they're coming out with. I forgot yeah. what it's called. It's like some orange one. You can, you, some of y'all watch it probably know, but it's supposed yeah. to be good for syncing up. But yeah, I don't know. I know a lot of Hollywood recordings are done that way. Mm-hmm. You know, they will be in L.A., let's say, and the recorders are in L.A., mm-hmm. but then they'll be doing uh, recording the London Philharmonic, let's say. Mm-hmm. So they're they're in London playing, but being recording recorded in L.A. So that's cool. I haven't done the anything that there. sophisticated yet. Yeah, that's a high budget, probably high budget, a very high budget. Um, so you, we're still talking about the before the actual recording process. Pre, yep. We're talking about rehearsing. I would yep. say make sure your paperwork's right as well. Absolutely. Payments all figured out. Yeah. So we won't get too much detail of that, but that's huge too. Fifty dollars a day. I'm kidding, y'all. Just kidding. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's already getting people to undercut their own prices. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Make sure your paperwork's done. I would even say make sure that you know what the finished product's supposed to be. Agreed. Because, you know, some people may not may go somewhere else for mastering, mm-hmm. may go somewhere else for mixing. So yeah. you got to kind of know. Right. Like, what, am I, what are my deliverables here? Mm-hmm. Like, well, I just want the tracks. Okay. Cool, I could do it. Right. You know, so making sure that's all handled before. Right. And then in studio, what you do, Ray? In, in, in studio, studio, man. Okay, for me, this is where communication really kicks in, right? When you're in the studio... We're trying to come up with ideas, and I. Oh, this is like the creative process too, where maybe absolutely you're a absolutely. hybrid of having this music structured well. Maybe yep. there's some question marks, or you're just like, we're just going to jam out. And- exactly, and so so coming up with all these like so it's really important when you're, especially when you're the producer, when you're trying to communicate your vision. How are you communicating that? So mm-hmm. what I like to do, um, I communicate in music references. So, hey, man, can we get a U2 type vibe here on guitar? Right. Hey, can we get a Rihanna type beat here? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like be able to have a a mutual um, understanding of different musical terms. Terms. There there you go. Yeah. Musical terms. Like the number system. Yeah, number system will be another one. I'm big on the number system. How to, how to distinguish whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixty note, yeah, thirty second. What exactly. that sounds like. Yeah, knowing the instrument well enough to say, hey, can you play this on the G string instead of the blah blah blah? See that? Like I couldn't do it because I'm not a guitar player. You could do it. Well, I can figure. If you that learned out. it, but I'm just <laughs> saying, but but the terminology drums. Yeah, so bah, bah. let me get quarter notes on the kick drum on this section only, and then then and go into eighth note here to, and then go four on the floor, right? You know all that exactly. So terminology when you're in the studio is important. Now it, it's not as, um, I mean, it's not as obvious 
gone into it as, as you as you would think and maybe not as intuitive mm -hmm. but you learn pretty quickly that if you can't communicate it's gonna be roadblock city exactly like you're you're not gonna get what you're th you're thinking that's in your head mm -hmm. and man listen uh, another thing on the communication is like if you're the producer be vocal like yeah, don't just like if you don't yeah. like what's happening stop yeah you know, hey, I don't like that. No, don't do that there. No, no, no. I want this, this, and that. Don't be afraid. You're you're the guy, and you're the one that the studio or the artist or whoever's funding this thing, you're the one that they're looking to to get the right product that mm -hmm. they need. So take that authority, take that responsibility seriously, and don't be intimidated by, you know, like these Something. great players or, you know, anything like that. You're the guy. Stop them if you need, switch directions, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially I think that is like distinguishing, this may sound weird, hierarchy. Uh huh. Where it's like, say you're the music producer, but then the artist himself is going to have a final say in something. Right. Or you're the only final say, or someone else is the final say in how right. it goes. Right. You have to distinguish, like, okay, if this happens, I'm allowed to come in and say, we got to stop and change. Exactly. But you could say you could leave it, and it's up to you if you want to keep it. You know, right. Which and and I'm in constant uh, dialogue with the artists. Yeah. Right? Hey, do you, are you, you like that? You like what they're doing? You like that lead line? Yeah, you got to work that uh, talk back button. That's Make right. Make sure it's off sometimes. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings yeah. if you're but, saying But that. even if they're in the control room with you, like you know, l listening to everything, hey, are you? make sure you like everything because when they leave, this is it. Yeah. So no going in that you know just stay stay lockstep with your with your artists whoever you're working for. Yeah, I would say mid recording too. Yeah. In between songs. Uh-huh. Say make sure you're in tune. Oh, dude. Well, <laughs> in in Nashville, whenever I'm working with professionals, they, they tune know. well, they tune every time you stop. Yeah. No matter what. In between takes. You know, hey, if someone's talking through an idea, like they'll tune back up. I mean, it's it's constantly they're they're constantly tuning. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's something you have to know though. If you're, I mean, you got to know that you got people starting off that are probably not working with the Nashville professionals. They be working with whoever. Yeah, and you got to tell them, especially if I've heard hey man, tune up. Yeah, I've worked a lot with people that are not high level, uh -huh. and I'd have to go in and help them with their guitar setting right. up, or using mine right. that sort of stuff so you have to know be knowledgeable of who you're working with right say, hey, right all right we need you to tune hey is your guitar in tune well i just tune so i don't care tune it again in fact what i started telling people i just bro, tune good tune again <laughs> it's, it's like every time we stop even though someone's going to be talking tune tune yeah tune while they're talking like hit click click your every just just tune automatically if you stop tune yeah, I've heard I've heard something. It was online, of course, but they were talking about making sure everyone's tuned to the same tuner. Which oh, I've never had I've never had any issues with them tuning for their own with their own pedal or on Logic. Uh huh. But if I could, I try to get them all to tune on Logic. Nice. And I didn't just know use that. that tuner. Oh, I see. I've never had issues with people tuning in different, like it being off. You like like uh, yeah, I'm used to the chromatic pedals, the white ones. Yeah, the Boss. Yeah, yeah, and there's all sorts of different tuners. So I've heard it like, make sure they all tune to the same thing, or you have the clip-on tuners. Those are kind of trash, I think. Right. In my experience, but I've never had issues with that. I guess some pedals you could slightly turn the uh, the semitone off or yeah. turn it up. So yeah, something to be mindful of. If they turn a couple bit different on one guitar and then the other guitar is correct. So yeah, just something to be mindful of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would. Make sure y'all tune all the time. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> one thing. One thing's huge too is like finding a way that people are all on the same page as far as like the numbers uh -huh. to make sure that everyone's playing what they should because you have to know enough about like all right we're going to the four here. Correct. Why are you going to the one? Right. Like we all know it's a four. So mark it now that it's a four. Yeah. Well, now are you a chart guy? Because uh, that's the other thing. Mid like four when, chart. Yeah. Well, like when you're in the studio. Yeah. And again, we're talking about communication, right? So the chart is the main thing to communicate what the song is, right? Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, everyone needs to know. So either everyone needs to be on the number system or mm -hmm. just the regular chordal system, right? I'll put everyone on numbers. 
It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. <laughs> especially like, <laughs> especially if the singer goes, la, 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 uh, you know what? Because I've had this happen. This one's too uh, high. It's too high. Can we take everything down a half step? Uh, I mean, I got to go D minor Wait, what? and transpose to the uh, F sharp minor. And, uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I've had numbers. that. I've had that happen before. Yeah, if you don't know what the numbers is, you better find out. Or pick up one of our courses that show it. What? Yeah, it's a Nashville number <laughs> system. Nashville number system. It will actually make life a lot easier for yeah. you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of letting them have, I mean, depends on the caliber musician, right? Right. Like, if you or I go in and we're only doing one song, it's like, I know the number. I can memorize the numbers. So I practice it a couple of times. I know the intro is this versus this, blah, blah, blah. Right. I don't need the thing in front of me. Ah. And then there's some people that need it in front of them to see exactly. Oh, there we go. Like if I don't, <laughs> there we go. if I don't know the song and I'm playing drums or even keys, I need that chart or else I'm screwed. I'm a super quick learner, so that's why it's like for me naturally. I listen to it a couple of times. I know, boom. And if I write it down, I'm not going to use it later. But if I write it down, even more so, I'm learning it like really a lot quicker. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, yeah. I uh, now let's just be honest. If I was forced to learn it, I would probably. Right. Learn it. I think I'm probably being lazy with the chart. That's what you're doing. You're lazy. I was <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what you're doing. You're, you're being, just being lazy. lazy. Yeah. So if I have four, because it's like, I I'm don't saying have for to one think. song. If it's a bunch of songs, it's going to be. Yeah, I'm if it's four it songs, like, you know, typical set, like, like, I don't have to think. I just read it and play it. I know my tempo. I know my key. Yeah, but how much how much humanistic characters are you putting in it? How much Ray are you putting on? I'm a it? professional. <laughs> I'm putting everything I got. <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm, I'm putting everything I got. Yeah, I guess it's, it depends on what how you feel about it. <laughs> but you know, after a while, you hear the numbers. No question. You're like, oh yeah, that's a two or right. that's a whatever. Oh, that's a blah 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 blah. <laughs> You can hear and it. if we were to be honest, a lot of pop stuff is all the same kind of numbers, right? What you mean? A one, six, four, and a five in all different variations? One, one six, five, four, man. You bust out a two, no, you're no, like, what I'm is sorry, this? It's one, five, six, minor, four. That's the big one. Yeah. So you say minor. I don't even say the minor. Six is always going to be minor in my book. A six, <laughs> a two, a three. No, it ain't. Not in my book. I'm going <laughs> off of the major scale all the time. <laughs> Until I call it major, six major. Right. Or a four major, four, four right. flat major, whatever you want to call it. That's a letter. <laughs> Which That's is a three. <laughs> four That's flat major. But yeah, but you're right. Um, everyone knowing where they are. Yeah. And what the terms are. Yeah. You know, especially on the on the chart side. That's something yeah. you need to ask too before. Like I've done people, a lot of people I record haven't been extremely high caliber. Uh -huh. It's like, do you know the number system? Yeah, yeah, I do. How well do you know it? No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, you don't know it. Yeah, play a two. Well, see, I uh, I know it's uh, and you're like okay, but I you don't know two it. major or two minor, right? I'm <laughs> see, I'm telling you, it's a minor all the time. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta that's, see. That's why I say one, four, five are usually major. Two, three, and six are usually, usually minor. Yeah, they're not always. If I tell it different, that's <laughs> it's going to change. But that's right. If, if, if Rome is producing, I'm gonna tell you. Gonna <laughs> I'm gonna tell you exactly what I want. Default, it's a minor. There you go. If I tell you something else, then you change it up. There you go. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's a good part about recording it. You know, even making sure the overdubs are taken care of before everyone goes home. If you mm -hmm. need to do overdubs or yep. a lead line, yeah, that's Pitches. all in communication with the artist and mm -hmm. yourself if you're the final say. Right. Um, and then we go into posts. We go into post mixing, mm -hmm. editing. What's your process with that? Uh, for me, again, guys, I, I can't stress enough. And what we said on the podcast before, tracking is mixing, right? Mm -hmm. So the best signal to tape that you can get, like that tone, the sounds, all that, that that'll make your mixing that much more easy. Yep. Okay. So that's what you want to do when when I, when I when it comes to my approach to mixing is making sure the number one is making sure the recording went well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if that if you weren't at the recording, let's say, and you're having to mix and you're like you're the mix guy, then you have to kind of take it as you can. But mm -hmm. but um when it comes to producing, let's see. Um again, you're the guy, right? So if if something's not sounding quite right, maybe the balance is off, kind of what the big the mix engineer is not kind of 
vibing with you the same on certain levels of things, tell them. Yeah. St- stop the stop the tape and say, hey, I need this guitar part and this chorus to go up three dB. Mm-hmm. You we we need to crank this. Yeah. Right. You want it to be the best product you could possibly put together and put out. Yeah, absolutely. What yeah. what what do you do? You know, with with live guys on the mix on mix, the mix I, side. Most of the time, I'm the one mixing it. Okay. Okay. So, I've, it's been usually if I'm not the one mixing it, I'm I'm in the production role of actually recording and then getting the files and sending them off. Oh, uh, okay. So like I'm I'm the recording production side. Gotcha. There's a sometimes where it's I'm a oh I see I'll take it through the whole thing and yeah. mix and master and yeah. all that help with artwork a bunch of stuff because I work with a lot of independent people right in churches and stuff like that so right. Most of the time, I'll I say probably majority of the time it's like I'll have my hands on mixing it my own, and then either I'll help master or I'll send it off for mastering. Right, right. But if it's sent off for a mix, they just ask for the the track outs and right. You make sure those sound good. Mm-hmm. What I usually do though, because I, I I'm confident enough that I'm gonna mix better than anyone else. Yeah, I don't care who they are. I'm put that confidence in myself. Yeah. So I'll give them a mix. A Rome mix, yeah, and then I'll put that with the tracks of my mix down. Okay, send it off like that, so they know I'm not well, hey, a chump. So if we're talking about okay, <laughs> live players, right? Because um, sometimes this was—it's not controversy, you know. That, that's not the word, but just discussion. It's always been, what about sound replacement? Sound replacement, no. reamping, all those types of things. Oh, right. Like, right. what do you think about all that? I'm a fan. Okay, whatever sounds good. Do it. Do what it takes to sound my, good. My whole thing but is, but that's subjective too, though. So. Right. If if you're <laughs> going if you're gonna do that, then why have a live drummer in the first place? Just program it. Because you still got the. It, you want me to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because th- that's a big part of the discussion. It's like you know when, you know you you spent all this work in the studio, yeah. all this time, got these amazing players. You mean even replacing the timing on stuff? Uh, no, I, I don't mind fixing timing. That that's not a big deal. But but sound repl- like like putting in a a sample snare, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to using the live snare that you spent literally days getting. Yeah, this is this is my hybrid, and I think the best approach as yeah. far as being gray in a black and white society of mixers and people against samples and blah blah blah. Yeah, when I go to track someone, and I know for a fact that. We are going to get good sound in the recording process because that's what I do. Uh-huh. I'm going to get samples of oh, light, cross stick, medium, hard. Uh, and you'll sample those. You know what? I'm going to yes. sample those. And yes. then I, I pretty much all the time now, I'm actually using trigger and I'm blending in their samples. Almost everything. But but the sample from the live yeah, from, from the, the live recording session, yeah, because it's gonna it's gonna be exactly that. What, actually, makes a lot of sense. But if you don't I have like that. that, if you don't have that, um, that's a great tip, guys. Yeah, take that tip. Take that tip. Sample your stuff. Put the samples in. You're right. Like like like, get the guitar to do a a, a strum. No, I don't do guitars. What do you mean? I don't do the guitars. You don't sample the guitar? Mm-mm. Why not? Because they just have to get it good. Or I'll take a di. Right, you could manipulate the DI a little bit and then reamp well, the, it. Well, yeah, that's where the reamping comes in. Yeah, yeah. I'll I always take a dry DI just in case. But then at the end, I'll do like, hey, if you want to do some reverse guitar type of effects and all that. Because I'm a guitar player, so I could do all that if I. Oh, to. right. right. <laughs> that's well, the I difference. <laughs> I don't Same play, thing with drums. Like, I don't I have play the drum guitar. Setup, you know, so so like if I go, hey, hey, let me get a couple of diamonds. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then I can manip- manipulate that on the back end. Yeah. Same thing with bass. Yeah. I get all that stuff. Yeah, I ain't too concerned about that stuff because I could do it. With drums, though, that's, to me, that's where you could get the best sound, most natural feeling. Yeah, you're right. You're one absolutely of the best, right. That's one of the idea. best for it is that it's it's a clean sample, uh-huh. so you don't really have to roll your gates as hard on stuff. True. Because you're blending in a, a clean sample that is already that, so it's acting like a gate, which makes it cleaner, so you can EQ it a little more yeah, and not have yeah, cymbals man. going in. Nerd Tark with, with drums right there. That's a great tip. But if you just got a sick sample that you know is going to be banging, put Boop. that thing 100%. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. But it's still going to have the feel. If someone recorded it live. Uh-huh. You know, no human is exactly on no, the grid. Right. So you still have the feel. So it's cool. It's creative subject. That's a good idea, I guess. That's a good idea on the post. 
Yeah, and post, figure out who's going to master it. Boom. Figure out the exit strategy. It's kind of straightforward. Yeah. Revision-wise, this is a huge one, I think, whenever people are like, how many revisions do I give them? Well, you better plan ahead of time what you're going to do with revisions and what that yeah. process looks like. Yeah, if we're doing our job from the beginning – the right way, man, we should be super close. Yeah, whatever y'all agree to, say. By the time the mix comes, <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. It's like, I'm giving you three revisions. That's if it. You go revi- if you want to revise after that, it's going to cost this much on top of what we already said, what yeah. we already agreed to. You agree? Yes, I agree. And then what they're going to do, those first couple, the first revision, they're going to be yeah. listening intently like, all right, yeah, well, this needs to come up. This needs to go down. Right. What is that, your text? Who's calling you? Sorry. <laughs> someone's, someone's booking with Ray right now. Sorry, production. guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but keep going. But that, this, is, this is great. Yeah, make sure your revisions, because if you tell them X amount of revisions, they're going to listen a lot more as opposed to just flippantly listen. Oh, I got unlimited revisions. I'll make yeah, it yeah, much I want. Yeah, be critically listening the entire process. Yep. That way, again, it goes back to tracking is mixing. Like, if you do your job well on the front, the back should be a lot easier yep, and like you easier. you won't have to be fooling with all that you yep. know um uh reamping and fool with all that mm-hmm. you know, heavy editing and and all that stuff yep. so that's good yeah i think there's always going to be revisions but that's good rome you're thanks. a good producer thanks man <laughs> <laughs> you know you 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 you're talented you're good yeah, there's there, uh, there's a, probably a bunch of other stuff we didn't cover yeah, as well because it's live band production. There's so many variables involved. Is yeah. everyone going to be in the same room? Is right. drums going to be over here? Is everyone going to be in their own room? We're I've tracking everyone it, live. I've done blah, it blah, blah. A, multiple, a lot of different ways. Yeah, different ways. So yeah. if you have any questions about it more and we want to talk about it more, let, let us, us know. Let us know. We will, we will link it up. Hey, you know what I forgot to talk about? What? Oh, swag. Ooh, swag. Swag. It's not the gear, it's the ear. Boom. Right? Yep. On Amazon right now. Amazon. You can pick it up. Just look forward, producer. It's not the gear, and it'll pop up. I think this one pops up first, but we also have a. a I need to get. I haven't ordered mine. Hurry up. Gotta order my swag. Swag. On the topic of you doing something, Ray, we have a story about you. Oh, this is hilarious. (laughs) So. By the Ray time has a story I, about something very crazy. The time I was on the road and I sprained my ankle. <laughs> yes, tell us the story, Ray. <laughs> right, so uh, I was with Michael Levy Smith, and we were doing a run of shows. And a tour or a run of shows? Uh, I don't remember. I think <laughs> it, it was the summer, so it, the, pretty much run, run of run of. What's shows. the difference? I don't. That's why I said it. Oh, okay. Well, a run of shows is when you do three or four shows and then have a few weeks off and then you do another three oh, or four shows. Then it's like a a tour, tour, boom, you're kind of gone for three months. Right. And you're every single week you're doing at least four or five shows. That That's more of a tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're, we were just doing a run of shows. Um, the next day, we had to play at the Cincinnati Reds, Reds game, well, after the, after the game um, at – at the stadium in Cincinnati, right? Well, after the the show before, I was running back to meet the bus, didn't see a separation between the grass and the concrete. Mm. So I was running along and then boom, hit. And it was horrible. Twisted my ankle, fell. I mean, it was it was a nightmare. And I had a high sprain. They had to take me to the hospital that day Dang. because my foot swelled up. It swelled up like double. Is your left? It was my left. Okay. We're just drummer talk here. We'll get to the right, the point right later. exactly. So it's my left. So I'm at the hospital. So they're doping me up. All this other stuff. And everyone's like, Raymond, can you play tomorrow? Like we're supposed to be at the Cincinnati Reds. Like, can you play? I was like, Yeah, yeah, I can. Like, the I drugs were talking, up, but I was, <laughs> but I wasn't sure. <laughs> Right. Like, oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, anyway, we get to Cincinnati. We, we because the game is going, we can't do any kind of setup or prep before, right? It's all done after. It. So, um, at my, my foot's. It, it's not really getting worse, but it's swelled well, up. It ain't getting like, better. <laughs> it was bad. So the cool thing is this. So, so it's it was my left foot, right, which is my high head foot. So, if it would have been my right foot, I probably couldn't have played that night. Right. But because it was my you left, played, you would hit the kick notes on your left foot with the double bass. Oh pedal. no way! Dude. That would have been horrible. <laughs> that would have been rough. 
but but um yeah so it it i was uh where was i, I kind of got lost track. You're talking about going up there to that, go play that's right so we were um so they kept asking me the whole time hey man are you sure you can play i'm like yes because it's my left foot i'll just i'll just anchor down the hi-hat and be it should be fine well what's cool is the cincinnati reds trainers found out about what happened so i got invited back to the locker room where all the Cincinnati Reds were, they were like, hey, blah, 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 high five, whatever. And so the trainer, they, they put me in the, what do you call it, the circulating cool thing? The cryotherapy? No, it wasn't cryotherapy, but, you know, the thing that you sit in that's super cold that's supposed to help your muscles. Anyway, I, they, they put my foot in it, but the swelling went down, and then they did a full tape up on my left foot. Nice. They hooked you up. Right. Did and they then, inject you at all with anything? No, they didn't. They need that good stuff? <laughs> No, no, but but then after that, it felt a lot better. Now, I couldn't use it to play, so they, they put a chair by my hi-hat, and I had my foot on the chair, my left foot on the chair, and then I played with my right foot the whole time. Dang. And like like every other song, Smitty, <laughs> Mike, Michael turned around, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm rocking. Yeah, I'm good. I don't Dude, feel nothing. How does this sound? How does it, and then we listened back to the recording. It sounded great. Yeah. <laughs> because we would record every night. But yeah, Cincinnati Sheesh. Reds Stadium. Like that was probably my first stadium uh, performance with a bum leg. <laughs> probably your only one. <laughs> it was. It was a wow. Leg. A bum, bum leg, Cincinnati Reds, 50,000 people. It was crazy. Dang. Yeah, That's a crazy story. I know. It, it, it's nuts. Well, I, was, I was talking about you using like the double bass pedal because that one story I had that the beater fell off of the right pedal when I was playing with my brother. Oh, really? Yeah, I, yeah. I had It sounded so flammy and trash, but I made it work. How, how, how long of a show did you have to do with it? It was only a couple of minutes until there was like a bass solo and there was a break. Oh, then you swapped to, it out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could have went the whole thing, though, if I had to. <laughs> you could have, too, probably. What do you do? You do I mean, like, the, the thing is, is like we're in the middle of running shows. I mean, I, you can't not play. Yeah. You just can't. You, I mean, what, you what get are they the kick do? drum and face it up. Both your legs are messed up, so you're playing kick with one stick. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I could have done like hi hat. I'm sorry. Um, floor time. Yeah, the floor time with it, but yeah, I just couldn't. You you got to keep going. The show must go the on, must, man. Show must go on. That's right. So we have a viewer comment. Ooh. This is off of YouTube, and they're commenting on uh, our segment about the Rolling Stones 200 yeah, the top best singer, 200. top yeah. 200. Yeah. And their username is fu you, <laughs> f u h y o u, fu. And they commented. This is actually a long thing, but it's pretty valid. They said, first of all, you made a mistake looking for credibility from Rolling Stone, <laughs> Rolling Effing Stone. They put e f f i n g. They're keeping it clean. You know, they're cussing without cussing. Keeping it real. Secondly, I would say that it's stupid for people to get riled up about the various lists from over the years. He's got a point. Yep. It's just that. It's just that staff's opinion, and nobody is going to ever know great singer that ever. Oh, no one is going to know every singer that ever existed ever. Who are those opera guys? Pavarotti. 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 Yeah. And his group was he on the list? Question mark. Uh, he wasn't. Were they on the list? He said, "I'll bet Cobain is on the list." And every and even he would think an inclusion of this would be ridiculous of him being on the list that's a point none of the li none of these lists are going to get it right because everyone has different tastes the average person couldn't rattle off 200 singers let alone name 200 great singers <laughs> fuck well, you was on the, on on the money the, on the money good job yep that, that was a great like cuz i didn't even think about that like he's right pavarotti dominic um all all those guys man that are amazing and yeah. all the all the ladies that are uh, unreal at the traditional singing that was very valid i didn't right. even think of it like that you can almost people. do a top 200 classical vocalist though by yeah. itself but he made a great point there's a couple. I'm, I'm gonna put myself out there <laughs> in my taste. Yeah. Mila listened to one opera singer. I don't know their name. I know their name. We're not gonna drop it. Yeah. To me, they don't sound good. Really? Yeah. Is it professional opera? Maybe. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you try to say. <laughs> so I'm like, Mila, better weigh in. Go ahead, Mila. Well, you know what? The Brazilian uh, singers are actually have a, a genre called sertanejo. Sure. Okay. It's it's like their country. 
there's a bunch of singers that are not good singers, but they kill country? it as artists. Like it's their version of country music. Oh, really? It's like they're, it's like pop their countries. I had no idea. Whatever. And there, there's singers on there that are not good, Ray. I'm not kidding. I have to show you. There's singers on there that are not good, and they're killing it as artists in Brazil. Like they're making good money? They are touring, selling shows, and doing DVDs. They still do DVDs there, which is live recordings. <laughs> yeah, well, so there you go. More to that dude's point of it being about, we're, we're assuming it's a dude, but I yeah. don't know. They have a very general username of uh, you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> very valid. Very subjective. Yes. But yeah, that was a great uh, comment. Thank you for that. We want to remind you all, mm. forwardproducer.com slash ISP, ISP, Industry Standard Productions. Don't get left in the dust whenever you can level up your game. Yeah, right. Sound good. Do good. Take what we talked about today. Mm-hmm. Go out there and kill it. Like, share, subscribe. Yes, please. please. Do all that stuff. Comment will help, too. If you have any questions you want us to elaborate more on the live music production, live recording of bands and stuff like that, let us know. We'll gladly do it. That helps the algorithm. The algorithm. Algorithm. And if y'all want us to talk about anything else as far as show related, let, let us, us know, know as well. We are very active. We try to comment to everything. Uh huh. Honestly, I believe now is a good time to ask questions because if it starts going crazy and there's a bunch more followers, you're probably going to get lost in the sauce. That's right. So make sure you do it now. Take advantage. Take advantage of it. That's right. We'll see you all next time. See y'all. Peace out. Peace.